I thought we would talk a little bit about what not to take with glutathione and also things that lower your glutathione that maybe you did not know about. I got the question of, um, well actually it wasn't a question, it was just more of a statement about being careful about adding baking soda to the glutathione because it may make it not as strong or you might not get the same results if you add too much. Um, I did try to look into it and I didn't find anything too crazy saying that adding baking soda will lower the strength of your glutathione. Um, I did find something that I thought was interesting and I'll have it linked down below if you guys want to read it. But basically it was a patent made by a company who makes um, a glutathione and baking soda type uh, liquid and I basically they're using it for patients who are like going through chemotherapy and I think it's either injected or it's placed through an IV but it is a mixture of glutathione and reduced glutathione and baking soda and so basically the patent is just for the composition of reduced glutathione in sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate basically saying that it quickens the drainage of free radicals through sulfidyl and alleviates the toxic side effects of chemotherapy and radio therapy. So the interesting thing about this that stood out to me was just the idea that this is for patients who are going through chemotherapy or going through radiotherapy and basically they made this concoction up for them. So assuming that baking soda is okay because why else would you make this patent of this mixture of reduced glutathione and baking soda? Like it makes no sense. So just with this I feel like baking soda probably does not weaken reduced glutathione or lower its strength in any way um, but like I said you can just do your own research into it. This was just something that I found that stood out but I did not find anything to you know lead me to believe that you should be worried about baking soda and glutathione but i don't know i mean there's always something because i was so surprised and this is what inspired me to make this video because when i was taking lysine a couple months ago um i happened to come across the right study and it was one that was using lab mice and lysine and, and glutathione and they basically came to the assumption or not assumption but conclusion that whenever they were dosing the lab mice with the lysine their glutathione levels were going down like their stores were being almost depleted and so i stopped my lysine right away like i'm so glad i caught it and i was i was on lysine for maybe like two weeks and it was going to be like a part of my everyday routine and after i found that i was like okay i'm gonna get away from this <laughs> so that's why we're making this video so for those of you, you know, these are just what I have found to not basically mesh with glutathione. Some of these you should just stay away from altogether. And some of these you can just take them at different times of the day. So taking glutathione, it takes a really kind of long time to start to see results if you are doing this on your own at home. And I think even for people who are taking IVs, like glutathione is something that many people will start their journey and they will stop it. They will quit. And as someone who's been doing this on and off, <laughs> I feel like I would, I definitely understand why, like what leads you to quit. Usually, and this is just being completely honest, you don't really start to see changes until like the six month mark. A lot of people say around three months, you'll start to see a change. And that's, that's being kind of, kind of generous. You have to stick with it at least half a year to start to figure out if this is even doing anything for you. So you have to make the decision to continue, you know, spending your money on this supplement to continue however you're taking it, whether you're doing acetyl glutathione, so you're just taking a pill by mouth or you're taking reduced glutathione because it's cheaper. So you have to mix it into a nebulizer or mix it into a rectal syringe, or you're doing IVs, which IVs take time and they take money or you're doing a glutathione shot I mean I think a lot of people just don't have the time to wait six months to even start to see a change like to see what is this doing for you you know the idea like the one to three months if you if you really look into it that's for people with fair to medium complexions like those are people who are like in Asia who are on this. Like those are people who are like much lighter. When you go to dark brown complexion or very dark brown, for dark brown, it's like one to six months. Like you're gonna be on it. 
one to six months and then you're going to start to see something um, for very dark it's six to 12 months so you have either side of the, the spectrum so do you imagine like and if you are like a completely completely black complexion like the darkest um that's like about two years so 12 to 24 months and i think that's why a lot of people just like quit so it's important to know what interacts badly with glutathione, what lowers your glutathione. So while you're waiting for what feels like ever to actually start to see a noticeable change, like, so we like to nitpick on this channel. Like I post videos all the time. When you're seeing yourself every single day, some days it seems like you're making progress, sometimes it doesn't. But to be honest, I really can't see a difference in my skin from week to week, unless I like did something crazy like a chemical peel, because that's pretty, you know, <laughs> it makes all of your skin come off um but aside from that it's like i have to literally go back six months and compare to my skin just to see a little bit of a change this is no radical change this is no extreme change um it takes a while but also you have to think um where did the person start off at are they protecting their skin or are they staying out of the sun not everyone can sometimes you're in situations where you just can't um and then also what is their dosage so that's why everyone else is different and it's really important to say what dosage you're on but yeah i mean still it, it sticks with it like i can't really see much of a change until i go back like six months and so it's going to take about maybe half a year for you to even notice anything really like change like to have it concrete and firm in your mind not a oh i think i see a difference but a oh there definitely is a difference it's going to take at least six months and then from there you're probably not going to be at your goal because that's just when you start to see a change so this is when you start getting confidence to kind of continue on most people don't even get to the six month mark to even gain their confidence that th their money is being well spent that their money isn't being wasted so if you're if you're just like looking it up trying to figure out okay how much glutathione should i be taking it usually goes per your body weight so it's like 20 to 40 milligrams per kg of body weight so let's say if you're 130 pounds which is about 58 kgs you're going to be starting at around 2500 milligrams of glutathione and i think it's interesting because like that's around 25 to 3000 milligrams is about what they give you if you're doing like an iv so i feel like this is assuming that you are getting glutathione in a form that's like going to get into your bloodstream which as you know, not every form of glutathione gets into your bloodstream. So for us, I think in the skincare community, most people say your baseline should be five to 6,000 milligrams starting point. I've been taking under that just to see what I can get away with. So I don't even think I am maybe the best before and after because I am not even starting at the recommended dosage because the recommended dosage daily for within the skincare community is like 6,000 milligrams. But if you look it up online, it says about 40 milligrams per pound or, you know, per uh, kg. So that's just assuming that you're getting it in a way that's going straight to your blood system. But I think for most of us, it's just better to like almost double that. <laughs> just double it and start from there if this is your first time and obviously the more you take the more expensive it is but that's just how it goes um aside from the glutathione and lysine obviously lysine will lower your glutathione because I, I just told you guys about that that i figured that out um slippery elm uh, slippery elm has like a lot of different benefits uh womanly benefits this is still good to take but you definitely want to take it a couple hours prior to taking your glutathione or like a couple hours after and slippery elm is just one of those it's a natural supplement it's like from the bark of a tree the slippery elm and uh, basically it shouldn't be taken with any other supplement at all it doesn't matter what you're taking just like don't take it with any other so it's not just glutathione and so once you have it in your system it doesn't like deplete your glutathione now acetaminophen can deplete your glutathione so what happens with acetaminophen is basically when your liver starts breaking it down there's like this toxic compound what glutathione does is it attacks any toxicities in our in our blood any toxicities that we might have and so what happens is that it starts to use the glutathione to break it down to get that toxic compound that it basically pops up after your acetaminophen starts to be processed by your liver 
So your body will use a little bit of your glutathione for this. And the only time that this gets really bad is if there's more acetaminophen in your system or which is gonna make more of that toxic compound once it starts getting broken down than glutathione because then it's gonna basically, if there's not enough glutathione, it's just basically gonna use up all the store and then you're depleted. So you really don't want that to happen. Obviously to see this in action, you'd have to be doing blood work.